Good morning, everyone. So last week I went live. We did a little training on the myths around hiring a coach. And a couple of those myths that we talked about were around um, not having enough money, not having enough time, and that it's easier to do it yourself. Today, I want to talk about objections to hiring a business coach or a life coach. And the, there's going to be some overlap, okay? I'm just going to say it as it is. There's going to be a little bit of overlap between the myths and the objections. Two of the most common objections we see around hiring a coach is our money and time. And we can also loop in that third one of, nope. I can do it myself. So this training is going to be applicable to you if you are a coach and you are doing sales calls, discovery calls, and you are experiencing objections. This is going to give you a little bit of insight on how to handle those objections, as well as if you are sitting in that place where you feel stuck in your business and you know that a coach could help move you forward, but you are digging in your heels and thinking, of the objections, like I don't have enough money, I don't have enough time. Nope, it's going to be easier if I do it myself because I will save money and I will save time. We're going to address all of those obje objections today. And I'm going to give you the just the, the bare bones of how you can either handle those objections when you're work, trying to recruit another client for yourself or whether you're in that place of stuck, not growing, don't know where to begin on your entrepreneurial journey, whatever the case may be but you have these thoughts in your head telling you that, nope, can't do it because of X, Y, Z. So let's address the money objection first, because this typically is the biggest one. And I want you to understand that where there is an objection, there is something else leading to that. And typically that is doubt. So most of the time when there is an objection, especially around money or time, there's this fear, there's this doubt in your mindset. So a lot of times the first step to overcoming an objection is actually navigating those thoughts around what is possible or what is good for you or what is what it is that you are actually capable of in terms of coming up with the money or coming up with the time. So I want you to have that thought in the back of your mind as we move through this, that a lot of times these objections are stemming from a mindset barrier. Your thoughts are holding you back. Your thoughts are keeping you stuck in a place of doubt. So when we talk about a money objection, the most common ones are, I don't have the money. I don't have that kind of money sitting around. I don't think I can come up with that money. Or nope, my husband's going to say, no, I can't spend that kind of money. Let me ask you this question. Can you afford to stay stuck in the same place you are today for another six months? or another year. Think about that for a second. What would your life look like a year from now if you continue on the path of doing things yourself and not hiring a coach? It's a big question, right? And if you don't know where to begin, or if you feel stuck, like you're not growing, even though you're doing all the things that you have heard or read online, you're not going to advance in the next year if you don't get the help that you need. So I want you to think about that while we go through these objections and how to handle them. Okay, so if your mind is telling you that you don't have the money, what is the reality behind that thought? Do you have a savings account that you could borrow from? Do you have a family member that you could take an advancement from? For example, you know that there's going to be an inheritance someday. Take a non-repayable loan, right, from that person. Or just ask for a loan from somebody that you know is established and has a savings account that you could borrow and pay back. You could get a line of credit from your bank. You could also, you could also take out... Um, not a small business, you could take out a small business loan from your bank, but you could also sell things that you don't need, you don't use anymore. You could also use a credit card 
and use the credit card as a payment plan, meaning you take out the credit card and you get miles, you get cash back, or you get reward points. And then you're using that to pay for your coaching, but you're also using that as a bonus for later on, especially those that are cash back or miles or um, points that you can use for other things later. Most credit cards now have that reward program that then you could tap into. You could also ask the person that you want to work with if there's a payment plan. A lot of coaches offer a payment plan. Those payment plans may look different from coach to coach, but they are oftentimes available. PayPal also has a program where you can borrow the money from PayPal and pay it back gradually with zero interest. So how can you beat that? If you go to the bank, chances are there's going to be interest. Um, you could even, if you want to borrow money from a relative, you could say, can I borrow this money? I will pay it back. I will make payments to you throughout the time that I am doing this coaching program, but I'm willing to pay you an amount of interest. And maybe that amount of interest is lower than what you would have to pay at a bank. So you can see that there are multiple options, multiple avenues you could take to get the funding so that you can continue to grow your business or you can get your business off the ground. If you don't invest in your business, where will it be? And if the answer to that is, I don't see it going anywhere fast, then maybe hiring someone is the way to be able to make the money to support yourself, to support your family, to create that transformation, to change the trajectory of your business and your life and the life of your family members and those others that you serve. If you think about this, investing in money to move yourself forward, to move your business forward, to be able to generate a return on investment, the more opportunity you're going to have to support your community, to support your family, and all of those other good things that most of us, at least, as service providers and heart-centered entrepreneurs have on our heart to do. So those are just a few things. So that perspective can be used, those options can be used, whether you are a coach selling your program or whether you are someone that is evaluating hiring a coach. Don't let doubt, fear, and the objection of not having enough money hold you back from taking that next step to grow your business. If you want to be fulfilled, if you want to reach those goals, sometimes it's just necessary to get the help, right? When you work with a coach, and this is something that I want you to do, this is a great exercise to do. First of all, I want you to pray. If you are experiencing doubt, fear, and objections around hiring a coach to get the help you need, but you feel a calling on your heart, sit down with the Lord and pray. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill you with wisdom and knowledge. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you to discern who is the best coach for you. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you discern where you can come up with the money. I guarantee you that if you sit down in prayer with the Lord, you're going to receive the answers that you need. The sky is going to open up and you're going to see opportunity for finding the money or for building a relationship or having an, an emotional connection with someone that you know can help you. Once you've said those prayers, I want you to look at, to make lists, right? Make Evaluate where you are today and where you want to be in the next year. And I want you to look, make a list of the things that you've already done that have not moved the needle forward on your business, or maybe they have moved the needle forward on your business, but you're still in that same place. You're not growing. You're not attracting clients. Nobody's finding you despite the hours that you're spending on social media. And then I want you to list out all the benefits that could happen from working with a coach. So I'm going to share some of those with you now that I know my clients have experienced and that I've experienced through working with my coaches. One, you will achieve complete clarity. 
when we're trying to do things on our own and we're consuming content to try to figure out what to do next or what the next right step is, we often go down a path of confusion because what everybody else is doing online is not necessarily what we should be doing and what will move the needle forward on our business. So having complete clarity is very important. And a lot of times if you're doing all these things, but you aren't attracting clients, it's because you're confused, which leads to confusion on your audience's part. If you're confused, they're going to be confused. The other thing is when you have that calling on your heart, sometimes it's it's hard to see past just what you want to do and know exactly what action steps to take. Whereas a business coach can actually help you navigate. Okay, if you create this strategy, here's how you're going to implement it. And here's how it's going to lead you to the to the the answers, the goals, the dreams that you want to accomplish and you want to achieve. Instead of just taking action and doing things that people have told you to do, create a strategy so that the action you take is intentional and effective, that you're starting at point A to get to point B, then to point C, and then all the way to Z, which is where your ultimate goal is. It's hard to see the big picture when you're in the trenches. So that's another huge advantage. It's also a huge advantage to have someone in your back pocket to hold you accountable for that action. Not to mention when you're starting a business, there's so much to know, right? There are processes you have to do. There's standard operating procedures. There's systems and tools and things that you can use to automate your business, to make it easier, but if you don't know what those are, and if you're just listening to what's out there online, it could very easily happen that you are then pulled into buying things that you really don't need to invest in. So that's another advantage of having someone in your back pocket to guide you. So those are just a few things. I'm going to dive in now to the second objection that is so, so common. And the second objection is time. People think that they don't have time to meet with a coach. You guys. I don't know about everybody else's program, but my program is one hour a week. Yes, you're going to have action items in between the times that we meet. Those action items that you're assigned every single week, at least for me, are going to move you forward in your business. They're ultimately going to save you tons of time because you're now doing things that are structured. They have meaning. They are intentional and they're going to be effective. Instead of spending your time spinning in circles, doing the same things over and over, but not moving the needle forward or spending your time researching online, when you have a coach in your back pocket or a mentor, that person has already done it. That person has already done the research. They've already done the implementation. They've already established themselves. So now they can easily help you establish yourself and your business in a way that is effective, right? Without backpedaling, without spinning in circles, you can take one step forward every single day to get to your ultimate goal. Sometimes even setting the goals is a challenge because you don't know what you need to do to get to the ultimate prize. And so having someone to guide you who's already done it is so key. I'm gonna give you an example. So I'm working with my client, Susan. She is amazing. She's actually a publisher. So if anybody out there is looking to write a book and needs a publisher, let me know because she would be a great one to work with. She's a, just a lovely, 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 lovely human. But here's the thing. She was doing all these things, right? And, but she wasn't attracting clients. And, he, and here's why because the groundwork hadn't been laid. The foundation hadn't been laid. And even yesterday she asked me, okay, how do I get to my, let's talk about Pinterest. How do I do my Pinterest strategy? It's, and I had to say, wait a second, wait a second, slow down because that is a strategy in and of itself. And yes, we are going to use it and it's going to be effective and it's going to be incredible for driving traffic to your website, but you have to have your website done first. Your website has to be highly functional. You have to have SEO. You have to have blog posts. You have to have calls to action. Because if you don't have those things, then what is the point in driving traffic to your website? The same idea is if you're out there doing PR, where is the PR going to get you if you don't have the foundation established and you don't have processes in place for bringing people into your 
to your program or to your, to your business, right? Effectively. So that is where coaching can save you a tremendous amount of time because you're doing things in the right order, in the right sequence, in at the right time so that you're building from the ground up, not throwing spaghetti at the wall, so to speak, and then, or grasping for straws, hoping it works when it's not in the right order. You're not doing the things that make sense for the long-term success. And that is where building a foundation is so incredibly important. So I know you guys have heard me talk about that so many times uh, about building a solid foundation first. And these are little components to that. But this is where having someone in your in your life, a, a business coach, a life coach, just to guide you on those mindset struggles, those mindset barriers, the doubt, the fear, the anxiety, the things that are holding you back, preventing you from taking one step and then another and then another. Those things that are preventing you from attracting your ideal clients because you're confused or because your energy levels aren't right because you're and you're not able to bring them into your your community your world so when you look at that I want you to again that exercise that we talked about a few minutes ago when we talked about you know where are you at now and what have you been doing that's not working what are you doing that is working what are you spending your time on that is not producing results and then look at how much time you're spending doing this research or, you know, procrastinating because you are afraid that if you do this or put yourself out there in this way, it's not going to work. Or maybe you're procrastinating because you just don't know how to do something. A coach is someone that is going to be able to guide you on how to do it, when to do it, and then provide the support and accountability as you do it. And that is so time-saving. I can tell you that there were so many things I did not know about. And actually, I shouldn't even say I didn't know them. It was that I didn't believe I knew them. So until I started working with my coach and I discovered, oh my gosh, it's my thoughts that are holding me back. I was wasting a lot of time because I was doing things, but I wasn't doing them with number one, the right mindset. I wasn't believing in myself. I was confused because I was, tr you know, trying to do everything that I saw online and it just didn't make sense. And it, and it wasn't aligned with me. It wasn't aligned with my values. It wasn't aligned with just genuinely who I am at the core. So again, this, when you have someone to guide you, it, think of it as a guiding light. Um, it's so important. And I just want to say this, you know, God doesn't call the equipped. He equips the called. So if you think about that, um, you know, and, and you're being presented with an opportunity to work with someone, maybe this person is who God is equipping you with, right? This is the equipment God's giving you. This person may be the tool that you need to guide you on this journey to make your purpose come to life, to make that calling accessible to the world. So think about that. And if, if you feel like you're stuck, if you feel like you aren't growing at the rate you want to grow, if you feel like you don't know where to begin, maybe this is the light that God's putting forward for you to follow. When you meet with that coach or you're introduced to that coach or you are um, exposed to a new program. Okay, so lastly, let's talk about DIY. And a lot of this, what I just said, is related to that. When you are trying to do things yourself, you don't know what you don't know. And this is so true. I just had, um, I just edited a podcast episode for next week that's going to go live. And um, one of the, the gentlemen, there were two gentlemen that I interviewed, Robin Kennedy, and one of them said, you don't know what you don't know. I didn't know what I didn't know. And it's so true. We don't. And so sometimes when you think you can do it yourself, but you don't know where to begin, or you feel stuck at your current level and you aren't growing, chances are there's something that you just don't know that you're not recognizing that you don't know. And maybe that's about yourself. Maybe that's about your thoughts. Maybe that is a tool or a system or a process. Maybe it's just the ability to create a strategy that makes sense and works for you. So when you think about that, when you try to do it yourself, you're going to end up spending 
way more time. And from what I have seen, a lot more money than what is necessary in order to begin or to grow. I'm going to give you another example. My client, Gina, we worked together and you know, she, she thought that her website, because she invested $10,000 in this website, was going to be the end-all be-all and attract clients for her. And we're having a conversation one day in our coaching session. And she's like, I just don't understand why people aren't finding my website. And I said, well, let's look at the SEO in the back of your website. There was none. So here she had spent $10,000 on this website, $10,000. That is like the Rolls Royce of websites. And guess what? There was no SEO. So no one was finding her. That loops me back to that whole thought of we don't know what we don't know. She didn't know she needed SEO. She didn't know that the website designers hadn't put SEO on her website. So without that knowledge, no one was finding her. Today, her business is thriving. I literally reached out to her to ask if I could share this story. And it took a week for her to get back to me. And it took a week for her to get back to me, she said, because she's so busy with clients. How amazing is that? And her whole mission is to help anxious women who have experienced trauma overcome that. So here she's got this incredible gift, this incredible calling, this incredible purpose, but no one could find her. But now they are. So that's just another example of how when you have someone, someone else's eyes, someone else's perspective on your business, it can change your whole entire world. It can change the trajectory of your business, it can, which then in turn changes the trajectory of the lives that you're supporting, right? Your children, your spouse, whoever, maybe it's an elderly family member, maybe it's a charity organization. When you make more money, because you've invested in doing things the right way, in the right order, building the solid foundation first, then the sky is the limit for what you can do to transform your life and then change the trajectory of your business and the impact that you're going to have on the world. All right. I hope you guys found this helpful today. I am so grateful you were here with me and I encourage you to register for the Purpose to Results Masterclass that I'm going to be teaching. It is free and it is going to be on January 16th at 1 p.m. Eastern time so that we can you know, make sure that people all over the world can attend, um, try to compensate for all those different time zones. But I will put that link in the show notes and the comments so that you can easily access that. But again, it's the Purpose to Results Masterclass on how to start and grow your business without social media. So I've been talking a lot about this over the past several weeks. I'm going to be addressing some of these objections and myths there as well. But most importantly, we'll be taking you're going to walk away with information on how you can actively do things to start building that foundation for your business. So if you don't know where to begin, this is a great place to start is by attending the masterclass. So that will be January 16th at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And I will put the link to register in the show notes. All right, everyone have a blessed, blessed, blessed new year. And I will talk to you again soon.